Hey everyone, it's Jim from Vows and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in Tube Lab number 38, we're going to take a close-up look at the vintage Mullard EL34 XF2 series in particular. In fact, I think this is the first time I've looked at a specific tube um, exclusively. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. And if you're enjoying these videos, please hit the like button and subscribe. Okay, so everyone knows I have certain tubes that I get 110% behind. They just are significantly better than everything else. And the Mullard EL34 XF2 series from the 1960s is almost certainly one of the greatest EL34s ever made. But why is that? Well, first of all, Phillips and Mullard, remember, Phillips owned Mullard, among many other tube companies. They designed the XF um, series together, from scratch, and introduced the new design in 1958 with the XF1 series followed by the XF2 series in the 1960s, the XF3 series in the first half of the 70s, and finally the XF4 in the last half of the 70s, and the XF4 was in production till the very end of the second tube era. So, Phillips and Mullard had a number of things going for them. First, they designed the tube, so almost certainly they had the most extensive testing data available. They were also one of, if not the largest group of tube companies in the world, so they had enormous R&D and engineering expertise at their disposal. They also already knew exactly how to make a quality tube, so it wouldn't have been difficult to work up the factory floor to start making quality tubes. And lastly, they had materials experience and a highly skilled workforce that would have peaked with the end of the Second World War in 1945 and the beginning of the jet age. So this tube is the culmination of all that, and it is easily heard. Okay, let's look at a bunch of tubes. So there are a number of variations on the Mullard EL34. Some of them, and they're fairly rare, had a metal base. I believe these were almost always, if not always, labeled Phillips. I don't know a lot about them. I don't specialize in them. You can see this has an older style glass. You see it's got the seam up the middle, which is very much a uh, Phillips uh, thing. So it could be the metal bases weren't actually made in Blackburn, where the XF series were made. I don't know a lot about them, so I can't really talk much about them. These are very expensive tubes. I mean, the all of the Mullard EO34s are expensive tubes. These make the other ones look cheap. The, um, the XF1 and XF2 series were dominated with one particular type of construction. Or they started off with what what is known as a, a welded or a tack welded plate structure. Have a look. You see those little indentations there? There's a little tiny um, gap in the metal of the fold and at that point they did a quick tack weld and it's a, it's a neat, very, when you see that that's a sign of a high quality tube. It's a neat way to make a tube. Um, the XF3 and the XF4 series used um, what's known as a rivet. And you can see them, I'm not sure if they're showing up very good on the camera. You, you see the rectangular holes up here? Bing, 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 bing. Uh, and in fact, I'm holding not a real Mullard. Look at the lovely label. This is a reissue by New Sensor. They bought the name Mullard, along with a whole series of other names, including Gold Lion, uh, Tongue Saw, uh, Svetlana, and these tubes are made in um, the old reflector plant in Russia, in Saratov, Russia. And I don't, I, I don't want to call them more than a reissue. Um, 
and I think that's being kind. I don't want to use the other word um, on camera, but I think you know the one I'm, I'm talking about, the one that starts with an F. <laughs> Anyways, um, I, the only reason I brought these out was A, to warn you. Oh, that reminds me. Here's something I really want to talk about before I move on. With the heat of summer um, in the Northern Hemisphere, it looks like the fraudsters have arrived online, and I am seeing I'm seeing all kinds of vintage tubes that are clearly uh, fraudulent listings. Uh, I saw an amazing listing for um, for vintage mullards. Uh, I saw yesterday. I saw a listing for Svetlana's um, in which. They had the nerve to call a reissue by New Sensor a vintage Svetlana. And I thought, you, you scumbags. So anyways, be careful. The, the rule of thumb when buying tubes from someone you don't know and trust is have a look at their reviews. And if, if you're seeing, in one case, uh, very expensive tubes, a whole pile of very expensive tubes, I took a look at the reviews, and there was one five years ago. So what is that? That that's a that's a sleeper listing. Somebody set up an account, they parked it, and they activated it when it was time to rob somebody. Uh, so I was really I was I was really disappointed to see a whole bunch of them come through. So beware, folks. Just be careful. Okay, let's put that aside because th th that's nothing to celebrate. That tube. <laughs> so. There, there's an incredible number of labels. So here is a real label. Have a look at that. There's your symbol up there. I'm not even sure what that means, to be honest with you. But there you go. There's your mullard. The, the real mullards, let's see if we can get it on camera, will have two code lines from the factory. There'll be a top line that'll in the case of the yellow 34, they'll tell us the series. So in this case, I don't know if you can see, it's quite faint. At the top, it's XF2. It's there, maybe. And at the bottom, we'll get the plant and the date of manufacture. So there's a big capital B, so Blackburn. All of the XF2 series were made in Blackburn, absolutely. I've never seen anything other than that. And they were all made in the 60s. What else have we got? Here's um, one that's been branded by Phillips. Uh, and you can see, you can just barely see it. They used um, something called the mini watt label. And this is another XF2, I believe. I think this one doesn't have a. It's the the factory codes are delicate as can be, and um, some of them are gone. So you have to use plate identification and other techniques uh, that are all just basically visual comparisons. Here's another one. Let's even get that code on. It's another XF2. And this one's rebranded Dynaco, which is very common for the XF2 series. Dynaco must have had a bulk purchase deal. Uh, Dynaco was a high quality, uh, affordable tube kit and, um, and um, assembled uh, amplifier company. You could buy it as a kit or you could buy it as, um, as a fully assembled um, product. And here's one of the variations you can see up here. I specialize in, in the large single getter with two supports, which is the probably the more common version. Let me get it up there on camera for you. Ah, there you go. You'll see that advertised as a double O. So it's just a variation. Remember the gettering, the getters and the gettering that results up here on the top have nothing to do with the sound quality. It's just, it's just to help maintain the quality of the vacuum inside, right? Okay, so that's a bunch of varieties. Now, I don't normally have a quad of these playing. In fact, this is the first quad I've put together in months. Not that I haven't been trying, I've been bringing in a lot of stock, but they arrive as ones and twos. The other day, God, God bless the postman, I got six all in on the same day, which really helps with matching. Now, I normally don't have them playing, not because I don't love them. I do, but it's just really, it's really tough to keep them in stock. As soon as I get a match quad made up, someone buys them. 
which is crazy because they're very, very expensive tubes. But luckily, I have to do a listening test to make sure the quad is, is good in a tube amp, as good as the testing numbers show. So that takes about a week. <laughs> so I got a week of pure pleasure. Anyways, last week during my noon concert, I sat down to one of my favorite Nora Jones's live recordings, Till We Meet Again. And wow, it sounded totally different with the Mullards, with this particular set. It was like I had a new and better stereo. And I have a nice stereo. Mind you, it, I designed and built it, but it sounds really good. In fact, it's the best sounding stereo I've ever owned. The level of detail and clarity was significantly better than even the vintage Svetlana's, and that tube is a great sounding EO34. The one thing I noticed was how much, clean, how much cleaner the background got. It was almost like the music was coming out of a solid wall of blackness. I don't know how else to describe it. Combine the detail with a warm, rich mid-range that some describe as listening to liquid gold, and well, you've got the XF2. So, I put the first quad in a while into the store, and only a day later, I, I started matching up the second one. So I've got, I've got two quads, believe it or not, which it's, it's actually never happened. I've never had two at the same time. And as you can see, um, because I take my time in matching them up um, and collecting good close tubes, the, the quads, the, they're very expensive tubes, but the quads are good testing tubes and they're nice and tightly matched. Okay, well, it was fun to look at those. Now, some really uh, nice in-demand tubes came in this week. In fact, there was a, a really busy week at the post office going, <laughs> shipping out and coming in. And... As you know, I love vintage boxes. So this is one of my favorite 6SL7s. This is, this is the mil-spec version, the Jan CHS 6SL7 GT by Sylvania. It's also called the BT229, which is just the military designation, right? And this is the box from the 1950s that came in. You can just see, can you just see it on the end there? And have a look at how these things were put together. They had a little holder that slid like that and nestled the tube. Isn't that neat? That's exactly the way Electro Harmonix um, nestles their, their very large 300B tubes, which is an excellent way to hold a tube. But of course, the cardboard's getting old and fragile. Anyways, a bunch of these excellent sounding tubes arrived. They're not that easy to find, especially testing good. And they're all testing good, which is a real surprise. And normally I allow for a fairly significant loss when, when I'm testing a 70-year-old tube, even if the wholesaler says, um, you know, all testing new old stock or all matched and, you know, all sorts of bullshit. 99% um, of the time they come in and they don't, they don't match up. They don't test good. You know, last week I even had a bunch of dead tubes in the mix, and you know, maybe they died in transit, but probably not. So they just, it was just BS. They just weren't tested properly. And that's how I spent a big chunk of my day, is testing tubes. What else came in? Oh, we were talking about 6SL7s. Here is another, a little later version. You can't see it here. This is a Sylvania, and it's, this is a unique tube. I've talked about these before. I've got, I think I've got two matched pairs, one black plate and one gray plate. As far as I know, there's really no difference. It must have been a variation from one year of manufacturing to the other. They sound very much the same. And the, the interesting thing is, this series of Sylvania is a very warm, rich sounding tube. And when I paired it up, it was just totally by accident, but I paired it up with the XF2 Mullards, the sound was just out of this world. It was just amazing. And a lot of it had to do with the warmth and richness of this, really working well with those Mullards. But if you switch over to this tube, you, you move away from that warm mid-range a little bit 
to more towards clarity. So you get better detail and less warmth. Um, so you know, it's kind of interesting. You can you can be two different generations of mil spec Sylvania 6 SL7s can have two very different presentations. Neither one of them is is the best. They're both great at what they do. They're just different tubes, right? Oh yeah, and what else came in? A couple of quads of vintage um, Svetlana 6550Cs. Uh, let's see if I can get a label up for you. Uh, there we go. There's the real label right there. These are also uh, made as a reissue, so careful folks. And there's there's a B version of this that Svetlana themselves made. The, the real St. Petersburg Svetlana, as people like to call it. And they're all over the market, and they're dirt cheap. And unfortunately, um, well, fortunately for me, um, I know that they they have reliability issues, so I've not gotten into that tube at all. I'm just not willing to take a chance. Too many people have talked about them failing prematurely. So I think what happened with the B series is that they were thrown in warehouses when they realized they couldn't sell them. And somebody's bought up the warehouse and uh, just flooded the market with, with cheap, crummy tubes, unfortunately. The C-Series, they learned from the B-Series. These have been really reliable. I haven't had a single problem with them. In fact, Svetlana tubes um, have been extremely reliable. I almost never have a failure, and they tend to test quite good, uh, which is a great sign of a well-made tube. Okay, now, if you stay at the end, Till the end, I have something uh, very special for you. Now, I like to give discounts. Those Mullard XF2 tubes are going to, they're expensive. They really are. And, um, and I've got a lot of money invested to get that much inventory in stock. So there's a special code, code for anybody interested in them. It's going to be Mullard 100. The code has no expiry date, but the tubes don't last long. So <laughs> don't. Don't pause on that. I'll let you guess what the discount is. You plug it in and you'll find out. It'll be a pleasant surprise, I hope. Now, uh, don't forget that I've got flat rate $20 shipping around the world. And if your order is $150 or more, after discount, the shipping's on me, folks. Stay safe, everyone. This is Jim from Vows and More, signing off. Cheers, everyone.